In my own experience, one of the first things I did was I tried to go to my doctor and ask for what's called a bridging prescription. Now, a bridging prescription is when the GP agrees to write your prescription for hormones before your first appointment with the gender identity clinic. And the success rate in getting this done is, in general, very low. Very few people manage to persuade their doctors to write bridging prescriptions. I've heard figures about 15 to 20% of trans people who ask for it, get it? And if your GP says no, that's it. Your only option is to go and try and find another GP who'll do it for you. And the problem with that is you'll soon burn through all of the doctors in the practice and none of them will write it for you. And you end up in a position where you either have to go private or self-medicate or wait. Those are your three options. And I've known friends who um, live around the Glasgow area who've been badgering their doctors for bridging prescriptions for years and got nowhere. And they've even tried switching doctors and get nowhere. There is a partial register of doctors who are sympathetic to trans people, but it's not comprehensive. It's not kept up to date. It's largely based on people's own experiences, which may no longer be true. You know, the doctors may have changed their mind and decided they're not going to issue any more bridging prescriptions to new patients. Even if you do get a bridging prescription, because it's being done without medical supervision from the gender identity clinic, the levels they'll give you are generally very low and won't result in satisfactory transition. So for myself... Because I have a reasonably good income, I'm blessed in that fact, I went with your GP. Now, your GP, now known as the Waterside Clinic in Edinburgh, are horrendously expensive. We are talking £400 for a one-hour appointment, and you will need three appointments before you even get a prescription. So you need an initial appointment with them, a second appointment with an independent psychologist. And then on the third one, they'll prescribe you hormones. Now, in my case, the first two appointments went quite smoothly. You know, I turned up, I explained I'd been socially transitioned for, it was about eight months by that point. And they pretty much went, yeah, fine. Rubber stamped it. The um, psychologist assessment was a bit more tricky, but not by a large degree. But the real problem is £1,200, that, that's not chump change even for me, you know. And then I still have to pay for prescriptions on top of that. I still have to pay every three months for a half-hour appointment at a cost of a mere £200. And for some people, the medication costs, especially for trans mask people, can be quite high because a lot of it's done by injection, long-term injection. The injections are expensive. And that's just putting another barrier to healthcare in front of people. A financial barrier. You can either wait on the NHS and get it for free, which could take you up to six or seven years if you're unfortunate enough to be referred to the wrong gender identity clinic, or you can pay through the nose or they self-medicate. A possibly dangerous option the older you get, especially for um, trans women, 